Your subconscious mind is ruining your trail running consistency, making your motivation crash and making you lazy. And what would Bruce Lee say about that? Now I know jack about martial arts, but what I do know that good martial artists use their attacker's momentum and power to their advantage. And I've uncovered a way that you can do the same thing with your subconscious mind and eradicate that running slump. Now hitting a slump is perfectly normal. And like you, I lose the motivation to go trail running every now and again. And by every now and again, I mean every day. And the human mind is a complex thing. Yeah, even cyclists' mind. We think that we have a thought, and that thought passes down into our body, which dictates our behavior, and the behavior gets us our results. But that's not how it works. Now, we have a thought in our conscious mind. It passes through our subconscious mind first. And located in our subconscious mind is our beliefs, our thoughts, our values, our morals, our past experiences. And our thoughts get kicked to fudge by all that deep-rooted stuff. That dictates our behaviour. Oh, and the subconscious mind is guarded by something called the critical faculty. More on that in a bit. You see, I, I'm not mad about the day-to-day -day routine of running. But I love adventures, I love seeing new places around the world, and I have this deep-rooted desire to help and inspire others to achieve their dreams. Running is the vehicle I use to do that. So I need every bit of motivation to get out there and run as I can get. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you how to start trail running again and some simple psychological hacks that you can use to beat the slump. We're talking about how if you're a runner that has maybe stopped for a little while, how do you get started again? When I'm regularly running, trail running is one of my favorite things to do in the world. But sometimes when life gets busy and the weather changes, it's just hard to get going. And when you start piling on the few extra pounds over Christmas and New Year, it gets even harder. So the first thing you need to do is to get outdoors. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is put some clothes on then get outdoors. Getting outdoors is a great way to change how you are feeling right now. In neurolinguistic programming, we call it changing state. Whenever we lock in our body position, we lock in our mental state. So trying to get motivated when you're stuck in the same spot is like trying to pee in the wind. And as trail runners, we know all about that. So changing your body position, changing your location, or just moving your body, just allows the body to be able to change much easier. Whether it's going for a walk, getting outside, whether it's having a shower, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter as long as you change your body, and that will just make it a little bit easier to make change. Whatever works for you is the first step. For step two, I want to use a powerful metaphor that's easy for you to understand and that really drives my point home. And that metaphor is running. You see, the act of running is not a switch. To get from A to B is just not something you do in an instant. It's more like a dial that you turn gradually. And each step of your run is like turning the dial another notch, another notch, another notch. And scientists have discovered that breaking the task that you're struggling to complete down into smaller chunks makes it much easier to motivate yourself to do it. It's the slowly, slowly catchy monkey thought process that doesn't alert the critical faculty. The critical faculty is like a border control that stops things seeping into your subconscious mind. Do it bit by bit, slowly turning the dial allows you to change your behavior whilst your critical faculty is asleep. So now that you've changed state, think about each step required for you to go running. Visualize yourself doing each step in detail. It's like warming up your body before a run, but how often do we warm up our mind? So think about your kit and clothing setting your watch, choosing your music, your warm-up. Warm-up? Okay, the first four miles of your five-miler that you tell yourself is the warm-up. The direction you set off in. Significant landmarks you will pass along the route. Parts of the route you will retrace as you become lost. I'm not lost! Your sprint finish, your cool down. Cool down? Getting showered. And if nothing else, sometimes this is the most important. Just think about how you're gonna feel afterwards. And I, for one, as I look out and the sun's about to set on this beautiful winter's day, I'm really, really chuffed. I've done this run. Now, if you're still not getting it, try adding some sub-modalities to your visualizations. Sight, sound, smell, feel, and taste. Certain aspects of our senses and how they enhance how we experience events. So when thinking about putting on your trainers, mentally choose which shoes you will wear. Imagine them sitting on the shelf. 
Think about the sound of the cupboard door and the bollocking from your wife as you leave mud on the hall floor. The feel of them in your hands as you pick them up and slide them onto your feet. Maybe the taste of fresh water as you take a sip from your water bottle. Now I know all this seems weird, but if you keep going, your consistency will pay off as your momentum builds. And if you're still struggling to find momentum after this video, then check out this video where I give you almost 20 of my best tips for getting your running mojo back. See ya.